Hey guys, welcome back. It's AP Gains here, and today we are going to go over a full and complete tutorial of Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. And if you're just starting out, day one, don't worry, you'll be able to follow along. <laughs> Alright, just to get some stuff out of the way, first off, I will put in the description timestamps for all of the individual topics I cover in case you're coming here for a specific reason, i.e. you want to know about a specific aspect or part of the game, and you'll be able to quickly find it there. So please turn your attention to the description if you are here for a specific reason. If not, I'm going to start from the beginning, and I hope you enjoy. Alright, so first off, this game is called Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. It's often abbreviated to SWGOH, or some people refer to it as SWAGO or SWAGA, depending on your level of interpreting uh, how each letter sounds put together. But this is a turn-based strategy fighting game, I guess, with a uh, Star Wars intellectual property. So all of the characters are going to be characters from Star Wars movies, Star Wars comics, legends, uh, TV shows like Clone Wars and Rebels, stuff like that. So if you're a big Star Wars fan, this game is definitely going to be enjoyable because you'll be able to see all of the characters that you know and love, and maybe even learn about characters that you never knew about, and you'll grow to love them. So the way the game works is you um, either face an other opponent, not in a live form, or you face a challenge. So you go your five characters against an enemy five characters. And depending on a variety of factors I'll talk about later, uh, you take turns doing um, special abilities, attacks, stuff like that, until one team wins, and that's how you determine the combat of the game. And of course, I'll get into this more later, so don't worry. So when we first jump in, we're not going to have a screen like this if you're starting out brand new. You're going to go through a tutorial and it's going to explain very basically how everything works. I understand it can be a little confusing, so we'll go everything over everything here together. Um, I'll try to go relatively slow, simply so you don't have to keep skipping back if I say something that might be a little confusing. So all of this stuff is going to be confusing unless you know how it interacts with you and with each other. So we'll start top left and we'll just go uh, clockwise around the screen for the UI or the user interface. We have settings up here, you can change audio and stuff. Here you're gonna see your character level, or your account level rather. This will be your name, so uh, I chose a funny name. And level 85 is the max level you can be, so normally you'll show your experience gain through here. You can get through completing battles, daily challenges, and stuff like that. Mine is maxed out because I am a max level 85 character. Uh, Initially, when you first start off, you don't have to worry about this, but this is our uh, mod energy. We use this for our mod battles. Uh, as you can see over here, I'll talk about that later, don't worry. This would be our cantina energy. We use this to do cantina battles, and don't worry, I'll also talk about that later. And here is our, I call it campaign energy. I don't actually know if it's called campaign energy. Um, it's just called energy. I call it campaign energy because we use that for our campaign battles. Here are your crystals. Now this is a mobile game. So uh, in-app purchases run rampant and the company that owns this game, Capital Games, uh, are very good at taking your money if you're not careful. Here we have the uh, home button. If you ever go into, let's just, I'll click on a random thing. If you ever need to go back to that home screen and you get lost and this doesn't make any sense to you, we click the home button and eventually it will bring us back to the cantina here. Um, going down, we have events. This will signify that there are active events going on. Uh, we'll talk about that. This, you don't have to worry about if you're just starting out. This is a uh, warning that I have to go into the Grand Arena Championship and do all that stuff. Um, so don't worry about that if you're just starting out. Here we have our territory battles. Uh, this is a higher level thing once you get into guilds, which of course I'll talk about later. And this is just an advertisement for something they want you to buy. Um, I bought something called a hyperdrive bundle. So that's why my name is going to be yellow and your starting out might be white. They usually advertise it down here. Basically, it jump starts your account for $100, which I know is absurd. Um, I bought it for myself as a birthday present because I love myself and I love this game. So that's why I have the yellow. It gives you a bunch of characters, a bunch of gear, 
basically lets you do a bunch of fun stuff that's kind of paywalled and time walled, I guess. Um, I have videos on that. I might make more. Um, if you're serious about the game, like you have an account and you really enjoy it, but you realize your account sucks and you want to start all over again, but you really love this game, I do think the Hyperdrive bundle is worth it if you will be consistent and commit to the game. Uh, here we have objectives. Inside objectives, I know it's going to be confusing. It starts with our daily objectives. When you're first starting out, this is going to be incredibly important because I've done them all, but it will give you tasks like spend campaign energy on hard nodes. Um, and basically, if you complete all of those tasks, you get experience and you get little rewards. Also, um, every six or so hours, you'll get access to free energy that you can use to spend. Here is the journey guide. These are the legendary characters. As you can see, I have some, don't have others. If you click on, let's say, Grandmaster Yoda, they'll give you a summary. Obviously, they'll promote the shop where you can buy stuff to not buy him because that would be too easy, right? Buy characters to help you get him. And then once you go to the activity, it tells you required or recommended characters, and you can go in and complete the events to get five, six, and eventually seven star Grandmaster Yoda. So these are the legendary events. You don't have to worry about those till you're a little bit more geared up. Quests. Quests I forgot about completely because they're something you get commonly um, in the beginning of the game, but after you get to the later game, you kind of ignore them. Uh, these, I bought the Hyperdrive bundle, so I never actually needed to worry about. Um, but basically, they're just harder quests. Achievements. These are how you're going to get your Darth Vader. And they just updated the game, so Darth Vader is actually good. If you played this game a long time ago, Darth Vader was terrible. So you're in for a treat if you're just starting out. Uh, they'll tell you donate 500 gear to guild members when you're 20th Territory War, and they'll give you random uh, rewards. And then guild activities, this is how you know you're uh, contributing to the guild. I haven't played today because I had school, so I'll probably be like way, way down at the bottom because I didn't spend any of my uh, crystals to get more energy, and therefore I let my team down, and I know all these people, and they're going to be mad at me. So we can either press this arrow button to go back one or press the home button to go back to the main screen. All right, moving over to the left, we have chat. Um, once you join a guild, you'll have guild chat. Uh, yeah, I messaged my uh, my opponent after I or before I destroyed him viciously, and he never replied. Here you're gonna see guild stuff. So this will take you first to raids. Um, I'll talk about raids later. See this button? This will it doesn't have the home button. It has the guild icon button. It'll take you to the guild. Don't worry, I'll talk about the guild later. So we go back. It'll take us back one, back two. Here we have our inbox. Um, again, I haven't played today, so I, my rewards are not going to be bad, but here we can collect rewards. Yay, rank number one. I'm so cool. Um, this is where you can get daily login rewards. Uh, these pop up automatically, so you don't usually need to come here. This they'll send you eventually uh, when they have updates or stuff they want you to buy, and this is a link to the forums. Here we have allies. Allies are super important when you're first starting off. Um, not so much when you uh, have basically beaten the game by being level 85. Basically what allies allow you to do... Oh look, there's my ally code. Uh, basically what allies allow you to do is take in more powerful and extra units into your battles, um, allowing you to complete them easier. Ships uh, will go over basically just another form of combat in the game. And the almighty characters. Uh, there are a lot. I think you're starting to hurt from scrolling. There are a lot of characters. So there's plenty to discover and amazement to be had. All right, now that we've talked about all that, we are going to talk about the campaign. Now it's going to start you off with light side battles. Light side battle one, normal one. So. It should guide you through this process, but just in case you forgot or it didn't make sense to you, you click on a battle you'd like to do. You click Battle, and it says uh, you want six campaign energy. Luckily, I have more than six. So I'll go into a battle. This is where you select your ally. Now, this is why it's important to have high-level allies, because if you have allies that are super powerful compared relatively to the 
battle you're doing, they'll be able to uh, destroy the opponents and make it easy. I'll take uh, I'll take Padme. So you can also, if you want, deselect the ally. So let's say, since this is the first one, I want to use level one characters because that's what you're going to be using. You're likely going to be using characters they give you, which is Clone Wars Chewbacca. I have them a little bit leveled up. Sorry about that. Uh, who else did I give you? I don't remember. I give you someone else. I'll just take a... Uh, Ewok Scout. And, oh, they give you the Consular. Okay, so these are the characters you'll usually start off with. And you'll hop into your battle. So after it loads, we'll go over combat. So this is how combat works. The blue bar is your turn meter. The green bar is your health. For right now, we only have health. Eventually, there'll be another bar on top of it. That's protection. We don't need to worry about that yet. Uh, protection basically is extra health, but it's a separate category so characters can have more health and more protection depending on a wide variety of things so as you can see my ewok scout has a hundred percent turn meter and the most turn meter so he's going to go first so i have a basic ability here ewok ambush that will deal physical damage to target enemy and i have a special ability over here rushing attack which will deal physical damage to target enemy with an additional 30 percent chance to critically hit and like most games, critically hits, critical hits just do more damage. So seven most turn meter, I get to go first. Uh, basic attacks, refresh every time. As you can see here, reusable in four turns. So let's just go right to left. I one-shot him, nice. So now it is Clone Wars Chewbacca's turn. As you can see, their turn meter has advanced. And turn meter is dependent on speed, which is one of the stats we'll go over when we talk about mods. Oh, it's actually Consular's turn, not Chewbacca's. Sorry about that. So I have, again, my basic ability, which will, for these lower characters, just deal physical damage. And here, in reusable in five turns, I have a basic heal. I have a feeling we'll need that later. Now, Chewbacca is a tank, therefore he has a basic ability and a taunting ability. So let's try this out. I'll taunt, and we have this buff. Buffs are green, debuffs will be red, and it will explain what it does. Taunt, enemies will target this unit. So these enemies don't have any abilities that let them target people who don't have taunts. So because I'm taunting, they all went after Chewbacca. And now since Ewok is the fastest, he got his speed back, and we can use a basic attack over here. Now again, they're all targeting Chewbacca because he has the taunt. Now we can apply our heal. Each ally recovers health equal to 25% of Jedi Consular's max health. So his max health is not much. But relative to them, they gain a decent amount of health. Now it's Chewbacca's turn. I use my basic. Ewok Scout's turn again. Now the taunt's up and has disappeared, therefore the B1 Battle Droid can target whoever he wants. And finally, I take this guy out. I have one. Now, most uh, PvE, or player versus environment, uh, battles will have more than one stage. Most PvP, or player versus player, will only have one because you pit your two teams against each other. So now I have to go against a boss. Bosses are denoted up here with a boss, and they're usually fairly strong. So I'll take out the B1. Oh, this is a command battle droid, therefore he's a little bit stronger. Now I will do a basic attack on the B2 super battle droid. And he did his attack over here. Now this gives me increased critical chance. Unfortunately, I got a red number, which is a normal hit, a yellow number, or gold, depending on... Uh, how you define it will be a critical hit. And three versus one is not a fair fight, I win. So I got three stars, which means I finished with all of the characters I brought in alive. Um, if you lose one, you get two stars. If you survive with only one or two characters, then you get one star. These are my rewards. These I use for training, training droids, and this I use to spend on a bunch of stuff. So I continue and I have beat it. And then it will unlock the next one, and the next one, the next one. All right, now eventually, once you complete all of them, you'll have access to the hard battles. Now the hard battles are where you're gonna do a lot of your grinding later in the game, because they often have rewards 
that grant you shards. Now shards allow you to unlock characters, and I'll talk about that when I talk about characters. But these battles are going to require more energy, and you only get a limited number of them. Therefore, I can only do five battles here, but if I was to do a normal battle, I can do it unlimited times. So we'll go in. Here we go. Uh, again, I will take the ally out. And this is a hard battle, so I'll bring in someone slightly stronger. Um, how about I just bring in some Ewoks? I can't remember who the... Uh, oh, Chief Nebit. Do I have any more Ewoks? I do. Now let's bring in these characters. To be honest, I don't know if they'll win. Oh yeah, we'll be fine. So now, as you can see, I have more characters. Similarly, here's my basic attack. Some characters obviously have basic attacks that will do more than just physical damage to target enemy. This also has a 55% chance to grant protection up, equal to 10% of... you get it. And a special ability that taunts. So you guys know what taunt is, it's all taunt. Now there are other debuffs and buffs, like this one, heal over time, recover health each turn. Now, let's see, I'll use a basic attack, and I'll use another basic attack, and another basic attack, and another one, and another one, another, another, and there we go. So as you can see, these characters are stronger than the first one I did, because this is a uh, hard node battle. Now, this will deal physical damage to all enemies. So this is an area of effect or AOE attack, so let's watch. Damage has been done to all of them. This deals special damage to all enemies with 20% chance to inflict ability block for one turn and 25% chance to stun droids. So I didn't assign that debuff to them, so ability block basically prevents them from using anything but their basic ability. Unfortunately I didn't land it, therefore they don't have that debuff. Dodge. I attack, there's always a percent chance to dodge. I forgot how to calculate it, but it's definitely there, and it is always annoying. So Snow Trooper just did an AoE hitting all of my guys. Luckily I'm slightly stronger, so I should take him out. And I come to the final battle with another boss here. So I'll do an AoE. I'll talk about this in just a second. Let me just kill his friend. Alright, so he has critical damage up, which basically just grants him more critical damage. Not more critical chance, that's a different buff, but more critical damage. So if he lands a, a critical hit, it will do more damage. And this guy will be significantly stronger simply because he's a boss. Now here I can talk about a feature called auto. This will allow you to not do any of the work, and the game will go by a lot faster. So if you know for sure you're going to win a battle, sometimes you just put it on auto. Ah, wait. Oh, I missed it. He had a debuff. But here we go. Debuffs are denoted in red. Ability block, like I said, special abilities are unusable. Therefore, let's see if I can not kill this guy. So there you go. See, now I can't use this ability because he is ability blocked. Fortunately, I can kill them. I win. No one died, so I'll get three stars. And I'll get the rewards, and I'm that much closer to getting a higher starred Ewok Scout. Now, if you three star a hard node, it allows you to multi sim it, which means it will just auto battle for you and give you the results. Or the rewards, rather. Quickly before I move on, dark side battles are the same thing. Uh, I forgot to mention light side battles, you only use light side characters. Dark side battles, you only use dark side characters. All right, so it's AP gains from the future, and this won't make sense to you, but it's AP gains from the future twice. I recorded this video and forgot to turn my mic on. So like seven minutes of me explaining characters is out the drain, and all of the examples that I used I can no longer use because I have used those materials. So for better or worse, this is going to be quite a bit quicker than the original one that doesn't have any actual audio file associated with it. So here you'll see your characters. Normally they'll be assigned in order based on power. So you can see your power will be done here. 
these are the abilities that your character has access to. You can upgrade them using the upgrade materials. Um, I guess I'll have to do this example all over again. Let's say I want to apply Force Bond onto Bastila Shan Fallen. I use an allotted amount of upgrade materials and I have gained that new ability. There's also something called Zetas. Nice. This is actually the fourth time I did this. The first time I forgot, the second time my computer crashed, the third time there's no audio and now I'm still having some issues. So this symbol right here shows you these Zetas. So let's take for example Merciless Massacre. At level 7, Merciless Massacre does this. Gain Merciless for one turn and take a bonus action after this turn and you get these stats. When I apply the Zeta, I get all of this. So I won't go over specifically Merciless Massacre. But just know that Zetas you'll get eventually later down the line if you're just starting out, and they are incredibly, incredibly powerful. All right, so as you can see here is the level of your character. Um, if he wasn't already max level, you could click this and you could train the character using the training droids and credits and make them stronger depending on, again, like I mentioned at the very beginning, your... Sorry, it just hit midnight, so I'm getting a bunch of pop-ups. Your specific level, so I'm level 85, therefore all of my characters I've upgraded to level 85. These are relics. Uh, these are, for the large majority of players, pay to acquire. Um, but you can get them free to play if you do a lot of grinding. Uh, basically, you need specific pieces of gear, just like leveling your gear, and you uh, acquire more powerful uh, stats. This will show you if there's a ship associated with them. Here you can see their stats, speed being the most important. Uh, obviously the faster characters go first as I explained in the combat tutorial. Here you'll see mods. Mods are broken down into these six. Um, they have sets, so this is a speed mod. If I have two speed mods, there's a set bonus of plus 5% speed. If I have four, there's a set bonus of plus 10% speed. So here you can see the primary stat, which is the big chunk of what the mod will do. For example, 36% crit damage, which is pretty good. 24% potency, which could... Well, I think that is the max, actually. And 30% speed. And then down here, we have secondary stats. You can... Oh, I have to do this all over again, don't I? So here you have a primary stat. For each tier of three, you'll gain a new stat. All the way up to four. Um, so the white or gray will give you nothing. When you start with green, you'll have one. When you have blue, you'll have two. Purple will be three. And gold, I don't have any level one gold mods, I don't think. Ah, here. Gold, you'll start with four. And if we go all the way out, we have train, which is where you can simply quickly train characters into train. Mods, we can have a better overview of which characters have which mods. And squads I like because you can pre-assign squads so that you don't have to scroll through your whole roster to find uh, specific characters you want. So you can pre-prepare teams for specific battles. As you can see here, I have my Grand Arena team prepared. So these are the teams that I would use in Grand Arena Championships, which I will talk about later in the video. All right, next we have the Cantina Battles. Cantina Battles use Cantina Energy. Once we hop in, similar to our campaign, except there's no hard nodes. All of these have potential to earn shards to unlock characters. So the unique thing about the Cantina is I can only use light side for the light side battles and dark side for the dark side battles. But here I have access to dark side and light side characters put together. So obviously in Cantina Battle 1, My stronger characters will uh, destroy them before I can explain anything. So let's uh, let's use a dark side character. Um, another dark side character, and then how about a light side character? A light side character and Gar Saxon. So we hop in here. And we have light side and dark side working together. Oftentimes, the enemies will also be dark side and light side. So, yeah. 
I may not have brought strong enough characters in. <laughs> oh, wow. Very elusive team I have here. Basically, this is the exact same thing as the dark and light side, only we can use our uh, characters in conjunction. So I'll let this play out, but uh, there isn't much more to talk about in this aspect. Alright, the next big thing you're going to unlock is the squad arena. Now here you'll see your matches, which are the potential opponents you can go against. Now these are other people, other real people and the squads they put down. If they don't get to play against you in real time, you simply play the AI using the team they set up. Uh, the ranks basically show you who spends a lot of money, and it goes progressively down. The, the lower you go, the less money you spent. Now, eventually, um, as the game progresses, you don't need to spend money to eventually climb here. It will just take years free to play for me to get to like this point. There's no way prizes which shows you the rewards you get every day for being at a certain rank and the redeem just takes you to the store which I'll talk about a little bit later so oops let me go back so let's pick um, the problem is I I'm not trying to brag or anything but I'm decent at this game Therefore, I use a team that is weaker than all of these teams, but I eventually get high enough. So I might lose the battle that I pick because all of these people are too powerful. I'll quickly explain the color is your gear level. I'll talk about gear when I talk about characters, and this blue stuff or red stuff is relics, which are largely bought with real-world money, but they can be grinded free-to-play. Um, I'll just take a random battle, even if I know I'll lose it. Uh, this is a team I have no chance of beating. But what the heck. So, as you can see, we're playing much higher level people. They're going to throw debuffs and buffs everywhere. You're not going to understand what this means right off the bat, but eventually you'll learn, like expose, stagger, speed down, all that stuff. So you might not understand every move I do, but I hope you understand what's going on. Their turn meter and my turn meter is going up and down, determining who gets to go, and determining the outcome of the battle. So, I will, uh, let's see, who do I want to, I'll go after Darth Revan. Nice, that's why I like Padme, because Padme does big boy damage. Problem is, uh, HK-47 is probably going to off me here in a second. So, let's get some of uh, this going on. So, even if you don't understand everything that's going on because you don't understand the moves of every character and all of that good stuff, I hope you understand that I'm controlling my characters and the computer is controlling the characters the opponent has set up for his defense. Now, this is not a team I thought I would beat. I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, battles can often be luck or skill, depending on the team composition. I mean, if I ever eventually kill this guy, I'll talk about team composition. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? All right, so I won. Therefore, I take his rank uh, if it ever loads. All right, Darth Maul house. So I won. No stars because it's not a campaign battle. And this was my previous rank. This was his rank. I took it from him. Gives me an option to ally him, but at this point I don't need allies. So. I used my Padme Amidala lead team. Uh, very similar to this one right here. To fight his Darth Revan team. Let's see if I can find another Darth Revan. Forget about Malak. Malak's uh, way too powerful for me to fight. So I used this team basically against this team. Now, the leader slot, you're going to have an ability that grants to your allies. Hers happens to be Courage, which basically makes Galactic Republic allies, which these all are, more powerful. His basically makes Sith and Sith Empire allies more powerful here. So you saw that battle. 
All right, now we have everyone's favorite galactic war. This every single 24 hours will reset, and you'll go through all of these battles of random characters fighting and eventually collect these rewards. Eventually, after you complete 50 of them, you'll be able to sim it each morning. And I will not lie to you, this is fun at first, and after the first five or six, it's the worst thing ever. But you gotta do it, because it gives you these bad boys, which help you buy character shards and help you throughout the game. All right, ships. Ships is another thing people don't particularly enjoy, but it is part of the game and is necessary. We have our fleet challenges, our fleet store, our fleet arena, our fleet, our fleet arena store, our fleet arena, fleet battles. Similar to the main cantina place, fleet battles. Similar structure to our campaign. We have normal. We have hard. Hard allows us to get shards. Um, we multi-sim. I didn't get a shard, which sucks. Because I'm currently grinding towards my Anakin ETA-2 Starfighter, which is a good ship. Now, the fleet arena is... If it ever loads, I'll just tell you. It's the same thing as a squad arena, only with your ships. So if this ever loads, we will see about that. There we go. As you can see, my rank has fallen drastically because I was not playing today. But basically, you bring in your ship squad against an opponent ship squad. The animations are a little different. But everything's the same. Turn meter, basic ability, special ability, another special ability, and opponents who do the same thing. The only difference is the ships have their own abilities. So, I don't mean the command ships. So, as you can see, it's my Admiral Akbar's Home One's turn. I have a basic ability and I have a bunch of special abilities that do various things. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one, which basically does AoE plus calls to random allies to assist. Not as much damage I would have liked, but I do have Hound's Tooth, the taunt going, so I don't have to worry too much. Now, eventually, once the timer elapses, you can call in a reinforcement by clicking this button and selecting one of the reinforcements. So remember, I didn't get that Anakin shard, I will bring in my Anakin here. And I'll use this ability, which does AoE damage, and a lot of it. As you can see, I have a various amount of buffs and debuffs that you'll learn slowly over the game. Uh, I might do a guide that explains all of them, but eventually you'll win pretty handily, because, like me, you'll end up dominating the game because you have the best coach. Obviously there's no stars because it's a squad arena-like battle and you take their rank. Now at the end of the day for squad arena and fleet arena, you get certain rewards which you can use in the store, which I will talk about later. Alright, mod battles. Mod battles are similar to the campaign except they give you pretty terrible rewards, but eventually allow you to unlock these which are also not that useful. But once you complete them, you unlock new tiers of the mod challenges. These give you mods which are actually useful. So mod challenges are basically battles of the same sort that you've seen thus far. Except they give you, well, uh, let's just pick a random. Let's just pick a random team. I like Sif, because they're cool. Obviously, I don't need all of these. One character would destroy them by themselves. So we go through this like any other. It'll give you a random assortment, just like a, a cantina battles. You slowly go through it. It has way more stages, so longevity is important. And eventually... Bear with me.
do, 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 do. go through all of this boring stuff. Eventually it'll come to the last one, which will usually give you a boss of some kind. And the ooh, scary final encounter with a cutscene. Sometimes he'll be by himself, sometimes he'll be uh, with a couple other guys. But with this powerful team, he's obviously no match for me. This, since it's a PvE as opposed to a PvP, does have a star count and it will give you rewards. Now, of course, if you three-star it, you can eventually multi-sim and just do all of the battles for you. Now, a very important part of the game is the guilds. Join a guild. Uh, I'm in Firestone 2. Should be in Firestone 1, but don't tell them. I'm here secretly. Uh, you can manage, which will allow you to look through all of the players and their various achievements. Exchange, which is where you beg for gear and, ooh, do I, and you don't give it back because you're poor. And everyone else is more powerful than you and you can't afford. Guild search is where you're going to look for a guild. Trump rocks. Interesting, okay. Over here is the guild store, which, like most tabs, will lead you to the store or shipments menu, which I'll talk about later. Here you have access to raids. Normal circumstances, you'll be able to do this raid for a higher level. You'll sim the Rancor and do the Sith and AAT raid. And here is where you do guild events. Currently, we are doing Geonosius Separatist Might Territory Battles. It's got our territory battle map and all the stuff we're doing. Currently, we do not... Ooh, look how close that is. Very close. No more donations, no more attacks. I bet Halo did that. Oh, Halo begging. Sometimes there will be uh, territory wars, which are instead of your guild versus the AI, it'll be your guild versus the opponents, similar to these squad battles. You'll place defenses and attack their defenses. Obviously, you'll face the uh, computer because it's no live PvP because Capital Games hates us. And, like everything, has access to these shipments. Press this button to get back to the guild. Press this button to get back to the home. Alright, now the time has come to talk about shipments. Here you can see each category of shipment, which basically tells you the currency which you can use to buy. So here I can use some of my credits to buy various pieces of gear. Here I can use crystals. Do not ever do this. Do not spend crystals on this stuff. Crystals are way too powerful, way too worthwhile, and you have to pay to get real world money to get them. But I do have these currency which I can throw away because I don't need them. Here we can use our cantina to buy stuff. Our uh, guild tokens. Ah, to buy stuff that we love, like low gray shards. Squad arena buy all this fancy stuff. Uh, Galactic to buy all this stuff. We can use credits to buy mods, but I don't do that. Uh, we can use our ship stuff to buy shards for ships that we may want, or characters like Zam Wessel, who we want to have. And don't forget Darth Vader ship. Here we have our guild event store where we can use see if I have any stun guns for sale. No, we can use it to buy various pieces of gear. Championship store, which you use your uh, championship points that I'll talk about later to buy stuff. And here we have the shard store. If you have character shards that go over the max amount, it'll bleed over into shard tokens that you can use to buy random pieces of gear like these stun guns that I need. All right, next up we have challenges. Now if we scroll over here, we go to challenges. Now, I have completed all of these for today, but as you can see, each day, challenges will pop up, and they will allow you to compete in the standard gameplay to um, three-star an event to get a certain tier of challenge. And once you have three-starred that event, you will have to multi-sim. <clears throat> I don't think from this screen it will allow me to access rewards, but basically it will give you things like training droids, uh, ability materials, money, random pieces of gear. Uh, pretty nice daily uh, boost to your overall grind. All right, events. Now, events are my favorite part. They allow you to play various situations um, 
for rewards. So this is an Omega. You'll learn about this when I talk about characters later. But let's quickly just hop in this battle. Sorry if you hear weird noises. Uh, Steam is updating in the background. <clears throat> so I quickly, obviously, use an overpowered team to beat this. But once I three-star it, in all future events, I will be able to simulate the battle and earn the rewards instantly, like I will do for these. As you can see, I simmed that, got the rewards, and I simmed this and got my Omega. Now there's various, there's Omega battles, there's special events um, that have different challenges with different rewards. As you can see here, I did this already, but it offered me Mother Talzin shards. And then we have Galactic Challenges, which I have covered in another video. But since this is an overall tutorial, basically Galactic Challenges allow you to hop into an event um, against a specific team with goals in mind to acquire, I will admit, terrible rewards. Uh, if you're watching this far in the future, maybe the rewards have gotten better and global player and enemy modifiers so safe haven applies this this will apply to us and this will apply to the enemy so all we do is we hop in we complete the battle if we complete the feats it allows us to uh, get those specific feat awards and also the normal rewards for completing obviously I've beaten it already so I won't get any rewards for this actually I did <laughs> calculated risk oh I use an undersized empire squad I see yeah complete the battle with an undersized squad usually it's the same rewards so far complete the battle with five of whatever it tells you to use at certain gear which is a little annoying complete the battle without losing a unit and complete the battle with an undersized squad alright if we go all the way over to the left we are at Grand Arena Championships, everyone's favorite. You can also use a shortcut through here. It will take you to the same place. Uh, it'll show you your division, which is basically you are placed in depending on how powerful your overall roster is, your current rank, which will go up as the Grand Arena season progresses, and your rank within that rank. Um, there are various rewards. I usually get Kyber, so I usually get these rewards of some kind. Yeah, so there's three distinct stages. There's lock-in, which is I'm in now, and I'll just join this before I forget. So this registers me basically for the Grand Arena this week. Um, it'll show me my opponents. There's three rounds in each week. So there's player lock-in. We go in, eventually it will assign me an opponent. I'll go in, and then there'll be setup phase, where I'll place my teams in each of these individual areas. So at mine, it's usually two teams of five here two teams of five here, one team of five here, and a ship team back here. So I would, and I have plenty of strategy videos on this channel if you'd like to see how to effectively win all of these uh, basically forever. Um, I'd place my two teams here, two teams here, team here, a ship team here, and then I'd battle my opponent's two teams here, two teams here, a team back here, and a ship battle back here. And to sum up how Grand Arena works, basically um, you get banners for winning and you get more banners the more efficient the win was so obviously if you do it in one attempt you'll get the most amount of banners but if you lose if you have full health and full protection you'll get more banners as opposed to if you lose health and lose protection and uh, each each attempt you take on each zone will decrease the amount of total banners and the person with the most banners at the end wins now all of those points will allow you to get your rank up but you can also do feats um, like win five fleet arena battles and then there's special uh, feats you can do that will give you like banners and stuff like defeat 12 enemy units using in grand arena with members of the Jedi High Council and then it will give you this uh, portrait master of the order so a funny story I uh, forgot to play two uh, two days of my grand arena last last season not this season, but the season prior. And I was like 10 away from hitting Kyber. And I know when I actually play, I never lose, but sometimes I forget to play because I'm too busy. But I did like every feat possible in one day that wasn't Grand Arena required. Like there was a bunch of do this many fleet battles, do this many fleet battles without reinforcements, this many squad battles. And I barely scraped out Kyber even after missing two whole Grand Arenas, which was pretty funny. So that's basically how Grand Arena works. I have many more videos that explain that in more detail.
All right, raids. Now I can't show you a raid at the moment because there are none active, but basically how a raid works is your guild will queue up a raid, you will enter it, and then eventually when it starts you will go into the raid, you will be presented with a series of boss battles with varying tactics that I can talk about in later videos, and you will fight against them doing a certain amount of damage. Usually, at most, in most cases, you can't beat the raid by yourself, it's a team effort. You do a bunch of damage, your teammates do a bunch of damage, and eventually you beat them, and you get a bunch of pretty great rewards. Um, most notably, shards for legendary characters like Treya here. General Kenobi here. And Han Solo here. So raids are super important, a great way to get high level gear um, as well as character shards for very, very important characters. And last but certainly not least, I would probably get uh, attacked by Capital Games if I didn't mention there is a store where you can use daily free packs that give you pretty much meaningless stuff, but are basically an excuse to get you to click in here so that you can see all of their amazing $50 packs and $10 packs that are useless. Um, hundred dollar packs I know I spent a hundred bucks on this game but that gave me so much compared to these packs are all hot hot garbage but it also allows you to buy specific resources like crystals um, so if you like to spend money on your mobile games this is definitely where you will do that all right so I think I covered most things um, I'm bound to have missed something um, please leave in the comments if there's anything specifically you had a question on and I'm very good about answering everyone's comments Usually pretty quickly, but if not, within a day or two. Um, so yeah, I've been AP Gains, and if you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you later.